guys. It's Christy with The Social Easel, and I am here with my daughter, Emma, tonight. And we are here for our free kids paint night that I'm super excited about. So um, I'm gonna give you guys a second to hop on. I'm gonna throw an apron on real quick. So let me know when you're here, and I can't see from uh, where I am right now, so I'll be turning my iPad on so that I can get all of your comments. But I wanna know who's painting tonight. So is it you? Maybe you're a grown up and you just wanna do this painting too, and that's totally fine. Are you with your kids? Are you with your grandkids? Are they ready? Are you guys excited? Emma hasn't painted with me in a long time, so. Yeah. But you've done this one before. We did this at uh, Mommy and Me. Okay. So just while I'm getting this together, super basic supplies when you're painting with kids. You don't need a lot. So we just grabbed some paper plates. We've got some paper towels. Um, Emma is painting on an 11 by 14 canvas board. Sorry. So if you don't know what that is, it's just a skinny, hard board instead of what I have, which is an 11 by 14 canvas that is bigger, thicker, I shouldn't say bigger. They're both 11 by 14, but this has the actual give of a canvas. What did you put this on? Did you just open this? Yes. Okay. I just thought. Oh, yeah, sorry, it's a separate thingy. Okay. Um, as you guys are logging on and starting to watch, do I? <laughs> so dumb. <laughs> no, you don't. Um, okay, I think I've got us set up. All right. Hey, Jackie. She's painting with several granddaughters. Hi, girls. We are painting our lovebirds tonight, Brenda. Hey, Terry. So this is the painting we're doing tonight. If I need to move the camera um, or come a little closer, I will do that. We're, it's always kind of a test when we set up in here. Um, so this is what we're painting tonight. Now, listen, you guys can do this with whatever colors you want to. Um, if you were already on our email list, you got an email with the exact colors I used, um, and I'm gonna go over those. But kids can do whatever they want to with this. They may want a blue sky or a purple sky. Are you doing purple? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna try purple. So, Emma's thinking a purple sky. You could do an ombre, which I did in the unicorn painting behind me, where you have like purple, pink, and blue all together. So there's lots of different ways you can do this. And when you're painting with kids, the main thing I want you to remember is to have fun and let them have fun and let them get creative and messy and enjoy the process. And for all you kids that are watching right now, if you do something on your canvas or your paper, whatever you're painting on, and you don't like it, don't get upset because this is the best thing about painting is that you can paint over anything. So as long as you let it dry, so if you do something you don't like, let's say you're painting this little bird and you mess up and you get upset and you don't want it to look that way, walk away, leave it alone, start working on another part of your painting or mom or grandma can blow dry it for you if you want to get through it faster. Once the paint is dry, you can paint over top of something that you didn't like and it's like it never happened. So this is why I love painting and once kids know that, then it frees them to know it's okay if you make happy little accidents, it's not a big deal because we can, we can fix it. Like there was one time I spilled an entire cup of dirty gray paint water all over a painting that I had almost finished and I was able to dry it and save it and you would never even know that that happened to that painting. So that's the first thing I want you guys to know, just some, some basics. Um, um, yeah, you can, Brenda, those, uh, you can get them on Amazon, you can get them in craft stores, Walmart, everywhere. Um, they're just called canvas boards. 
Hey, Sarah. Sarah said hi, yeah, Emma. <laughs> you can I say hi. Uh -huh. <laughs> so I used to teach local kids paint nights all the time. Um, and so we kind of had this whole thing in the beginning that I will go over with kids. And I'm going to do that with you guys, too. So if um, maybe your kids aren't super familiar with painting, or maybe they've only done like watercolor painting in school and they haven't really worked with acrylics before, um, it's a little bit different. So um, first of all, I want to go over the colors with you. And then tonight I'm going to be telling you more about the kids art camp. So if you guys have fun doing this with me tonight, you have the opportunity to be a part of the kids art camp and you get six more paintings with me, which are behind us. So um, these were mostly from Michael's um, Pink Blast, which is just kind of like a bubblegum pink, turquoise, any shade of blue is fine, purple. This one's called Apple Tart. It's like a lime green. And you can get craft paints, Walmart, Hobby Lobby, Michael's, all the places. So those are big bottles because those are what I used at my paint nights. But you can also just get these minis. Um, these are two deco art colors, um, Americana. This one is coral, coral blush, and this one is banana cream. So it's just a pale yellow and then obviously a coral. And then a couple fun things, I have white, always have white. <laughs> um, and then just a couple fun extras I brought, and I don't know if we'll use them yet. Emma and I will decide when we get to that part of the painting. This one is glitter. This is one of my favorite products. It's called Craft Twinkles by Deco Art. And um, if you guys need information, you can just comment the word info and you will get the link to everything I'm talking about, okay? Um, so this is Craft Twinkles if you wanna add some glitter to your painting. And this one is called Extreme Sheen and it's a metallic gold called 24 karat gold. So, um, if you followed me for a while, you know I love gold and I add it in almost all of my paintings. So there's a chance this one will show up in here. Um, but whenever I do kids paintings, I like to do a little bit of glitter too. Did I miss any questions? Uh, I don't think so. Someone said, uh, where is this being shown? But I don't know if it was. I don't know where it is. Oh, I just saw it. <laughs> I'm glad you found me, Marianne. Yep, we're on Central Time. We are, um, we're doing this from my home in Springfield, Missouri. Someone was asking where, where we are. So I'm going to set this up. Will you do me a favor? There's a stand, a tabletop easel on my desk, on my studio desk in there. I'm going to prop this up kind of over here so you guys can be looking at this um, while we are painting. Hey Matt, welcome. Hey Carol. Brandy says glitter and gold, yes. Always a little glitter and gold, thank you. Do you wanna set it up like right here? Not to where, if aiming at them. <laughs> is that gonna be in your way or is that fine? Might need to scoot it back a tad. Is that gonna get in your way? I can scoot over a little. No, it's fine. I see Paisley behind us. Oh, she's gone now. <laughs> hey, Teresa, hey, Amy. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and get our paint colors. Um, Emma, you can just start picking out what you want. While we're doing that, um, kids, I'm gonna kinda give you some basic rules when you're painting with acrylic paint. Now, my brushes happen to already be in water because um, they just already were for me painting um, the other day. And yes, you should not leave them in water, but yes, I do. So, you will start with dry brushes, okay? So you are not gonna be adding water to your paint or your brushes when you're painting with acrylic. We're going a brand new dry brush or if it was wet dry it off really good um, because we don't want that water mixing in our paint and thinning it out so dry brushes I have two here depending on what you buy you can get like a one inch flat brush or um, if you are at Michaels their artist loft um, 10 piece brush set is only $5.99 and this comes in there and it's a three-quarter inch this is what I always used when I was teaching paint nights 
so we've got a flat brush and then I think I put my other and then you just need like a small round so like a number two a number one depending on well I'll put another one in here if you want them it's it's up to you like I did yellow on the beak but you may change what would the main color be on the beak well, I just did yellow on the original. You can make it whatever. You can have an orange beak or a yellow beak. Whatever. Or a mix. Or a mix. Um, you're going to need, I left your paintbrush over there, the round for you, if you want to grab that. Ah. So I'm just doing this with two brushes, really. So just a flat three quarter inch or one inch, and then um, a round. A number one or number two. What so we want these dry, okay? And when you're painting, I'm talking to the kids, but you know, some of you grown-ups might know or need to know this tip too. When you are switching colors, this is, you know, from all the years of teaching, this is what I saw. Kids would switch their colors and then they would go to dry their brush. And what they would do is set it down on the table and just push it down really hard back and forth and it flares the bristles out. They're the same. Just... Yeah, those two. Um, so I'm going to show you my trick that I do when I'm switching colors and brushes. Um, that one is going to not damage your paintbrush. And two, it's going to make sure that whatever that previous color was that you were using is not going to transfer and mix in to your new color. So when let's say we're going from orange to purple. If you went from orange to purple and didn't rinse, by the way, you're going to get a really murky brown color that you're not going to like. Um, so we've rinsed really good. All right, so I mixed it in my water cup, pushed it down, swished it around in my water cup. Wipe the water off on the edges of your cup so you don't soak your paper towel immediately. And then I want you to grab a paper towel, any kind, and you're going to kind of wrap it around your paintbrush and you're going to squeeze it and get all that extra water out of there and you're reshaping your brush. And you're gonna do the same thing, it's really important with the round. Because if you guys take this brush and just wipe it on the table back and forth like this, it, that's, you're not gonna be able to get skinny lines with this. So you wanna do the same thing, I'm just squeezing it and you're just kind of reshaping it to get that point again. I have so any questions? Isn't it 11 by 15? 11 by 14, mm-hmm. It's 11 by 14 canvas. You can help me keep up with the questions if I miss them. Welcome, Debbie. Thanks for joining the Painting of the Month Club yesterday. You're going to have a lot of fun in there, too. All right. Is there anything else I'm forgetting? Does that sound like the normal spiel I would always give? Yes. Brushes, um, the paper towels, the paint. Go ahead and get some. You got white on there. Okay, so for our background, Emma's already got her colors. <laughs> um, for the background on this, I did a pink and white mixture. So you can see how it kind of is different everywhere. So it's not just one solid color and we're just painting the whole canvas pink. I would dip in to my pink and my white at the same time so it's kind of different everywhere. So you can do the same thing, whatever color you choose to paint your background. Let me know in the comments. I want to know, ask the kids what they want to do. And then tell me what color are you, what color are you doing your your background? I'm just gonna start with white and pink first because that's my background colors. You can go ahead and get all your colors on there like Emma did if you want to. I tend to be a little messy, <laughs> so I like to do my background colors first and then come back and add my accent colors in. Hey Tiffany, hey Cindy. The blue thing? Yeah. It just means a new comment came up. Oh, thank you, Helen. Amy's doing a blue ombre. Jean is watching by herself tonight. That is perfectly fine. Okay, so I'm gonna hold up my painting while I'm showing you guys this. I'm gonna really load it up. This is a, another tip if you're new to painting um, or new to painting with acrylics. Can you guys see how much paint I have in there? So you see how much is on the bristles? That's a lot. 
And the reason we want to do that is because we want it to spread easily for us. All right. So when I'm doing this, I'm going all over the place. Kids, this is where you're going to just have fun. All right. You are literally just covering the canvas with paint right now. If you have a canvas like I do, you can go ahead and pull it over to the edge too. So just crazy big brush strokes. But this is what, and I'll answer your question in just a second. This is what I want to show you. So that, you know, you have the right amount of paint because I was able to cover a big area. So if you were just real, you know, stingy with your paint and you just barely got any on there and you try to do that, look what happens. You can barely cover anything. All the grooves of your canvas are still showing. So you want enough paint that it glides easily, that it's not pulling on your canvas, but you don't want so much that it's like dripping off the brush, okay? You don't want it glopped on there um, and you don't want it super thick. We are gonna keep blending until this is nice, a nice thin coat over the entire thing. Because if you guys get too much paint on there and you get it all thick and gloppy, you're gonna have to wait a while until you can paint the birds and uh, the leaves and the tree and all that kind of stuff, because this has to be dry first. So I'm just gonna keep blending and keep filling this in. And if you notice you have any um, streaks when you're painting, um, adding a little bit more white to your paint is gonna help with that because some of the paints are really transparent, especially like blues and purples and you'll see streaks and it's just more see-through. So adding a little white to it makes it a little bit more solid and you won't see that as much. Um, another thing you can do if it's really bothering you and it's really streaky, you can let this dry first. Letting it dry is a very important step. Let it dry first and then do a second coat and it will cover up any of those streaks that you have. We got lots of you guys painting with their granddaughters or going to this week. And this will be, several of you have asked about like, is this gonna be available later? It is. Um, all you have to do is just go to the Facebook page and then we will also have it on my YouTube channel. So we'll get it, get it up on the YouTube channel tomorrow. So you can go to either place to go back and watch this. Does it just uh, go to iCloud on your phone when you record it? It just stays on the Facebook page because I'm live on the page. I didn't get a lot of answers on the colors, did I? Did I miss all those? I, was with blue ombre I saw blue ombre. Oh, right. And if you guys do have questions, feel free to ask them. Um, I'll be watching for them. Emma's going to help me, but I've also got Tiffany on here, and she's my community manager. She'll help answer questions um, if I miss them. So what do you guys think about a little contest? Let me know if you want a little contest because I have an idea. So you can shoot me up some hearts, or you can say yes in the, um, the post here. I haven't done one for a while and I thought this would be a fun night to do one. Starting to see some hearts coming up here. All right. So I'm just going around my edges right now. Linda says I love contests. All right, this one's gonna be super easy guys. Part of my goal and mission, especially with kids' paintings, is to get it in as front of, did I say that right? That sounded weird. Front <laughs> in front of as many children yeah, right. as I can. Because, and my kids are no different, they will spend too much time on their electronics, right? And we need to get them back into really creating and really like not doing it all digital. I want them to get their hands dirty. I want them covered in paint. I want them to know what painting feels like. 
I've been painting since I was like four. Um, my mom was an artist, so art has been a part of my life forever. Um, and obviously I think it made me into the person I am today. But my goal is for you guys to help me spread this love, help me get it out there to the kids. So what I want you to do is sprinkle this video. So all you have to do is hit that button down below the video and let's see how many people we can get on here tonight painting with us. And even if they can't do it tonight, they can jump back whenever and come back and join us. And they can do this free lesson with their kids and they can let their kids experience the painting. So what I want you to do, if you wanna enter the contest here, here's how, how it's gonna work. I want you to sprinkle it and Tiffany can tell you what that means. If, you ha if you're new and you don't know what sprinkling means. Um, and then after you do that, so we know that you did, just comment sprinkled. And tomorrow morning, I will come back and we will randomly select someone as the winner. And I will be mailing you my original that I'm painting right now, tonight. So someone will win the original that I'm doing tonight. And all you have to do is let your friends know about it and then tell us that you did and you're gonna get entered into the contest. Easy enough, right? <laughs> All right. I don't think I missed anything else. Thank you, Dora. Thanks, Tina. All right. So I'm just going to let this dry a little bit while I'm letting this dry and Emma's going to let hers dry. Do you want to do a second coat or are you fine? No, I'm fine. You're fine. Okay. So neither one of us are going to do a second coat. So we are just going to let this dry before we go to our next step. Um, and while um, we're doing that, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the kids art camp. So you want to be my Vanna White and grab the paintings to show them. <laughs> So, um, Emma's gonna kind of show you that you can sort of see them, um, but you can just take one at a time, um, and I'll just, you can just rotate them out. The first one is our llama. So, this is a six week, um, or not necessarily six weeks, it's a bundle of six videos. Last summer I did it as six weeks and then ended up changing it so you guys could have access to them all at once. It is six weeks worth of painting tutorials for kids. Um, so there's six paintings, and Emma's just gonna show them to you one at a time. Um, so we have the llama, this is the unicorn, rainbow unicorn, um, pandacorn. So some of these were created with Sophie, my youngest, um, because she's that super fun age where everything is still you know, magical and fun. Um, so you are going to get in the kids art camp you're going to get six full length videos of me teaching. And when I'm teaching in the videos, in those tutorials that you purchase, it's not gonna be like this. You're gonna have an overhead view where my camera is directly above the canvas showing you and your kids step-by-step step how to do the paintings. So you get six full length videos. You get six traceable templates. So kids are not gonna have to freehand this. You're not gonna have to freehand this. <laughs> You're gonna get these templates that you can trace on to whatever surface you wanna paint on. Um, and I will include a video that shows you how to do a transfer. So if you haven't done that before, I will include um, a video that I made that shows you how easy doing a transfer is. And then you're also gonna get the color and supply list. Was that all of them? Yes. Yeah, so okay. Yeah. And um, I also want to say on these, this is all customizable. So I talked about this the other day on my live, but when you are painting with kids, let them, um, let them get creative. Let them have fun. Let them play. Let them mix their own colors. Um, they may not want to paint them the colors that I have them. And it's funny because as adults, I find, you know, I teach adults and I teach children. Um, adults are really, really like we've been trained, right? Of like that perfectionist attitude and, and having everything exactly the way it's supposed to be. And you want that color list and you want to know the exact colors that I'm using. And that's fine, but kids don't care. <laughs> they just take them to the store 
uh, you know, show them some colors online if you're ordering your supplies online and just let them have fun picking out the colors and talk to them about what do they want to make that rainbow unicorn look like. Maybe they want to turn it into a horse instead. Um, or maybe they want to make the panda a teddy bear. So I will show you step by step how to do everything, but they can change it up and make it however they want. Um, and that's the fun of art. Um, and in addition to that, we have created, I'm really excited about this because this is going to be ongoing. When you buy an art camp with me, you are also going to get um, in our private Facebook group that is just created um, for people who join the art camp. And it's a place for the kids, um, moms, grandmas to go in there in a safe environment where no pictures are being shared outside of that group where you can post pictures of your kids paintings. They can, you know, hold them up and be proud and post and they can go look at other kids paintings. Um, and so you're going to get to be a part of that exclusive Facebook group um, that only happens through the kids art camp. And um, let me see if I have, hold on. <laughs> I was going to grab my phone, but you guys are my phone, so I've got to get back on here. Why is it doing that? Here we go. So it's going to be kind of like our kids art camp um, clubhouse. So it's going to be this little clubhouse page where everyone gets to go and post all their paintings and their progress. And then when I come out with a new kids art camp, I don't know when that will be, but last year, you know, we did one around the holidays. Every time I come up with a new kids art camp, it will have access to that Facebook group so you can continue to share and grow and maybe even meet some new friends, make some pen pals um, with the kids that they can meet other little artists doing the same thing they're doing. So we're very, very excited about that. Thank you guys for all the love and for sprinkling it for me. All right, I am going to grab my mixed media pad to show you a little closer so it's a little easier to see um, how to do the birds. I'm gonna do a thin second layer because there's the, yeah, it won't take long. So Emma's going to put, I'm going to show them why you're doing that so they understand. Emma's going to put a second layer on hers. This is what I was talking to you about. She used purple. Can you see how you can like tell where her brush strokes ended? I'm not sure if you can see that in the light. But there's a little bit of streaking and you can see where her um, paintbrush ended. So she's just going to grab a little bit more of her purple and white and put a real thin second coat on. And when you do do the second coat, it doesn't take much at all. Um, Laxon said, can you show the unicorn again? I can't. And you guys, um, when you click that link above, you're going to be able to see all of these. They're all posted on that page where you can sign up. I've painted that unicorn about 15, 16 classes. <laughs> Every one of them sold out. When I taught that unicorn, um, I literally posted it and it sold out in two and a half minutes. I posted another event and it sold out in three minutes and it continued like that. What was that, spring? Uh, yeah. Spring one year? <laughs> it was crazy. So the kids love the unicorn. Okay, so I was gonna show you, sorry, I wanted to show you what Emma was doing, but these are just a couple little birds that I was doodling. I love doing my little birds. Um, so there's a couple different ways you can do them. And I was just going to show you some shapes really quick before I put them straight on canvas so you could see what I'm doing. I think I might move you guys in just a little bit here because I think it'll be easier for you to see.
Is that view good? Can you see my canvas? I just have words over top of it. I can't see. Yeah, you can. Okay. So we'll get you just a little bit closer. You know what, I'm changing my mind. We're not gonna do the birds yet. We gotta get our trees and our leaves on there first. That way we know where the birds are gonna sit. <laughs> I was just jumping ahead of myself. I was getting excited about the birds. Have you done this one recently? Or have you not done it in a while, this painting? This painting? I haven't done it since we did that paint night that one time. Okay, so for my branches, I chose turquoise. Yeah, this is better. You guys can see a lot more here. And you don't need that cat. You don't need a ton of the accent colors, maybe like a quarter size amount. So I did like turquoise and um, I can pull. Don't forget we can color mix, right? Because color mixing is fun. We can pull a little bit of our pink into our blue and make a little shade of purple in here if we want to add some accents into the branches. And then I need the apple tart, which is a lime green, for my leaves. Is that all I need right now? Let me see what else. Do you need? Oh, um, do I need a darker pink? Did I forget to get a darker pink? I mean, for the bird and then dots. I might have you go in there and grab that. It's like the size bottle of the bright magenta. I just realized I forgot to give you guys a color. It's just a darker, a darker pink. It's called bright magenta. It's an apple barrel color. So any darker, I get a darker pink on my bird and these little dots. And if you are a tribe sister watching tonight and you want to join the art camp don't forget that you have your own special link um, and it's inside our facebook group so you don't want to sign up through the um the regular public link you want to sign up through the tribe sister link okay so I'm switching to my round. Whenever you're not using one of your brushes, make sure it goes in your water cup so that the paint doesn't dry on it. And let's see, I'm just gonna kind of hold this up for myself here so I can get an idea of where I want. All right, you guys can see what I'm doing, right? So I'm gonna start with this and just kind of pull this line out here. And we'll have one main branch here and then i'm going to have another one here you can take this and let's see how far i'm going to have this one pull out kind of go up and swoop down you want to give enough of a flat you know where it's not completely curved a flat surface for the bird to stand on So just two lines. I'm painting upside down, you don't have to. <laughs> oh, yeah, I was like, mm. And then I'm just going back with a little bit more of my blue to make it a little bit more solid. I'm gonna turn this around. I have that one splitting. And I'm gonna turn this around and show you guys. Then I'm gonna start adding some little lines off of the branch. Where else do I have? Down here. Can you scoot that? See how that's cut off the screen? They can't see the entire thing. I don't know if you can. When I moved the camera, it kind of cut yeah. that out. It looks like it's fine up there. Okay. No, and now we're back. <laughs> okay, so then on the bottom, I'm just gonna have a couple little branches pull off, and I'm starting inside 
my, my current line that I have on there, and I'm just kind of pulling out. And maybe one more over here. Maybe a little split at the end. You can make these however you want. Does the bottom one go from the left or the right? Left. The bottom one goes from the left to the right. So that's what my branches look like right now. And then remember how I was talking about you could um, add in some like pink if you wanted to. I'm gonna mix myself. I've still got the blue in my brush and I'm just grabbing some pink and it makes this little, maybe I want a little bit more blue in there, like a lavender color. Just to add some more color inside there a little bit. Sorry, you're hitting. It's a really long brush. It is a long brush. And then you could even add, like if you wanted a lighter color, you could pick up some white and kind of streak that in. So just play with it and see what colors you like in there. So just got our branches right now. And if you can't, um, oh, the paint bottle is blocking the bottom of a little, okay, I'll move these. Um, If you feel like you're struggling to get those points on the end of your branches, don't worry about that because you can just put leaves there. So it doesn't really matter what those branches look like right now. So now we're gonna switch to doing the leaves. And the leaves are just little almond shapes. going to show you on here. We're just using that apple tart color. Now I'm going to make this one really big just so you can see the shape. Think of it like a parentheses that's closed and connected together. So we're going to have one side of our curve here. It's like really like a football shape. And then the other side. That's that's the basic shape of the leaf. And then you're just going to fill it in. And you can do just solid green if you want to, or you could pick up some white with your green if you want to add a little bit of dimension to it and some shading and highlighting. So that is that is the basic shape for the um leaves. So if you don't have a mixed media pad like this that you can practice in or the kids don't um, and you're working on a tablecloth, if the kids want to practice these shapes before they go straight to their canvas, um, I really encourage that because it makes them feel a little bit more confident. So they can just paint right on their tablecloth and kind of test out their leaf shape if they want to. So does that help you guys to see that a little bit bigger before I start adding them on here? Make sure you guys can see this still. Oops, I accidentally touched the pink. I don't want pink. So I'm gonna start at the top. I like to start at the top and go down just so I'm not dragging my hand through the wet. And so like I said, I'm just gonna add these on. You can add them on to the ends. And I'm just doing one quick coat right now. We'll probably come back and put a second coat on these and add some white um, in if we want. Or you could even add a little bit of yellow with your green if you wanted. And there's no uh, like certain amount of leaves you have to have. So that's kind of like what that first one's gonna look like. I'm gonna have to have a little bird up there or move it, because I have this bird coming right in the opening there and I didn't make that opening the same. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna change it up a little. All right, 
tell me how you guys are doing. Everyone doing good so far? Are we having fun? You doing okay? Uh, yeah. How many of you guys are painting right now and how many of you are waiting and are going to come back and watch the replay and paint? Some of you may just be watching, which I think is also good because it's good to kind of get a run through and then you'll be more familiar when you're ready to paint. Linda says yes, going good with the leaves. So Linda, I'm gonna brag on you a little bit. Linda Stewart on here painting with me. She's um, in my tribe, which is my private membership. Um, and she did the kids art camp last year. I did this. And she took those six paintings and did them with her grandkids and kids in the community. And it ended up turning into this awesome thing. And she was teaching big groups of kids. You'll probably see some of her pictures on that page when you go to it is going to be her and the kids and all their paintings from last year because they're so awesome. Um, and it turned into her like doing this in her community and people know her um, now as a paint lady who's who teaches the classes. So she I know she was looking really forward for me uh, getting this kids art camp up and going. She was patiently waiting for me this summer because last summer I had it done a little bit earlier. A lot of you guys are watching. Hey, Stephanie. Stephanie's painting now. <laughs> Tim said, wait until dogs go to bed. <laughs> oh, thank you, Richard. Judy, I'm assuming, for sharing. Oh, awesome, Alice, and that'll be pretty. I can't wait to see everyone's paintings. So for this, um, you guys are going to want to show these off, right? And the kids are going to want to show these off. So we have the free Facebook group where you get to share your paintings from this free tutorial. So um, again, just comment the word info and you'll get to the link to join that group if you haven't already. And my team goes in there and puts special posts in depending on the painting that you've done with me. And it's kind of like a show off your work. So we'll have one in there for the lovebirds um, for you guys to show off what you've done and for everyone to post their pictures there. Okay, so I got my leaves on. Super simple. I'm gonna go back with uh, just a little, I think I'm gonna add a little bit of that pale yellow that I have in my leaf, leaves. You want any yellow? You have some. So I'm gonna show you this. I'll kind of hold it up so you can see. I already have my green on there. Some of it is still wet, some of it's drier. And I'm going back with my green Someone and... Asked how much for the camp, kids camp? Oh, the kids camp is, you have two options. The kids camp is $150 if you do a one-time purchase, or you can split the payment over two months and do two payments of $75. And that includes all six um, full-length videos, templates, color lists, Facebook community, um, I feel like I'm forgetting something else. Um, and you have lifetime access to these. So they're not going anywhere. You don't have to like worry and like get them done in a certain amount of time or anything like that. So can you see the difference of me adding that little bit of yellow in there? And it's not anything hard. It's an extra step, but it just adds a little bit to the painting instead of it just being just a solid green and if your paint was like a little see-through then you get that extra coverage there Oops. are i 
ice makers so well. So what do you guys think? Do you like the yellow in the leaves? I think it adds a little bit to it. A little bit of shading, a little bit of dimension. Pam, yes you can, that's a good question. She said, can you gift the kids camp? So what you would do is purchase it um, put your, like if you're buying it for your grandkids, put mom's name in there for like the actual like registration and then just put your credit card information in. And then when we see that purchase and she requests to join the Facebook group, we'll be able to match the names. So that's how that works is like whoever's name is, you know, signed up and registered for the camp, we go back and verify that and then add people to the Facebook group, but you can most definitely gift it, and this would that's an amazing gift to give your grandkids. They will love it. I like the yellow too, it's pretty. So I'm holding mine upside down, there, that's the right way. All right, now, I've got my basics on there. I'm going to show you guys how we can do a couple different shapes for the birds. Yes, ma'am, Leah. Uh, Leah said, um, if we purchase the kids um, camp, are we allowed to use those to teach local paint parties? Yes. Um, and that is in there. You'll see, like when you guys go to the page later, all that information will be there for you. Um, but yes, you can. If you teach paint parties, um, and you want to use these for your local business, um, number one, they will do great for you. <laughs> um, I am proof of that. So they are awesome kids paintings to do for um, local paint nights. Um, so you can do that. You cannot teach them online, sell kits online, any of that kind of stuff. And when you check out, there will be a little um, uh, like agreement that you have to click to purchase that will go over those rules for you too. But yes, you can use them if you want to do local paint parties. Um, and like Linda turned it into last year, she ended up, you know, doing it with her grandkids and then neighborhood kids wanted to come and you never know what it could turn into. Linda wants to see what yours looks like. You want to hold yours up? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not done with the leaves yet. It's looking good. You've got little dainty leaves. What's that supposed to be? They're dainty, little. Oh. Um, That's no, not a bad thing, but they're cute. Compared to mine. That's okay. Mm -hmm. So on Emma's, I would recommend for her, since she's doing a purple background, and there's not a ton of contrast between that, that green and that purple. So when she goes back and adds the yellow into her leaves, it's really, really gonna pop because yellow and purple are opposite on the color wheel and they're mm -hmm. complementary sure. colors. So anytime you can do that in a painting, um, it's just gonna make it more exciting visually for you. They're saying it looks good. You're about to poke me in the eyeball with that handle. <laughs> Okay, so while she's finishing that up, I'm gonna show you um, two ways that you can do the lovebirds. So the one I have flying is a very easy shape. It's just like a teardrop, except it's sideways. So I'm just doing a big loop, just like that. So that's the shape of that lovebird. And then all I did was come on and just do a little heart for the tail, tail feathers. So that's lovebird shape number one. Kind of looks like a little fish, the way we used to do fish when you're little. Um, oh, Linda said, love the purple. Her granddaughter said, oh. <laughs> 
Christy, you have lifetime access to the paintings. So five years from now, if you want to go back to them, they're going to be there for you. Oops, sorry, babe. Okay, so that's shape number one. And I'm going to have, I can't do this one upside down. So I'm going to, I'm going to paint this one and then I'm going to show it to you. So we're doing this shape. And she's just kind of, it's an odd, odd little shape. You kind of start out like a hill. So I'm going to show you kind of. And I may have to tweak it a little if I don't like it. I think this needs to come out more here. So, and this will be good for you to see like the lines I'm making and that I can change my mind and it doesn't have to be right the first time. So that's that second shape, sorry. So when I started, I kind of did this like swoop, kind of pull down and up. That's what I was saying, was like a hill. And then I round it around and back up to the tail. But let's say you do it like that the first time and you don't get the shape the way you want it, you can just go around it again and make it a little bigger. So those are your two basic shapes. And then I, I did the little heart on the tail there and then she had little legs to stand on the branch so i just wanted to show you guys the shapes first before i actually paint them on the canvas so that it's a little easier for you so again i'm using i'm gonna switch i'm actually gonna leave this pink in here because i'm gonna do this bluebird at the top do I have any other Miranda fans out there? Miranda Lambert? I love her new song, Bluebird. It's my favorite. I think of it every time I paint one now. So I'm gonna do my little Bluebird first. And I have to decide where I'm gonna put her because I changed the, you know, um, the spacing a little bit. I have this upside down. I almost painted it. It really wouldn't have mattered, I guess. Either way, it would have worked. Pam said like two, oh, oh it went away. <laughs> like two parentheses turned opposite, head one, the way back until, yeah, it is. And I'm actually gonna show you another way. If that, if that seemed too hard, I just thought of this. This is another way you could do it. Okay, let's say that looked like way hard and you don't wanna do that. Let's start like this instead. Let's do an oval. And then just pull the tail out. That's probably a much easier way to do it, don't you think? Break it down into two shapes. An oval and a little tail. So I think I'm gonna have maybe a little dainty bluebird up here since I didn't leave a lot of space. She'll be super cute. Good. So I've got my little sideways teardrop shape there. And then if this is dry, you can rest your hand on here if you need to do that. I'm going to do a little heart or kind of like a little bow. You can a heart or like you're making a bow either way. You're going to get that same same shape okay now I added see how I added some like purple on the bottom part of um, her so you could use purple out of the bottle 
I'm just gonna mix myself some. So I'm using that hot pink, that darker one that I have, and then mixing some of my turquoise with it to get some, oh, my brush just came apart. Look at that. Been used at too many paint nights. I'll twist it back on there. I'm just gonna add a little purple streak in there, maybe a little bit in her tail. So that's what it looks like right now. Kind of looks like a fish floating in the sky. So we're going to leave that. I don't want to paint the feather, um, the wing on there until that's dry because it's just going to drag through that color. So I'm going to jump to my other bird. I don't know where to put the bird down here. Shouldn't it be flying up there because there's nowhere for it to sit up there? Yeah, that one's flying like this one. So you could put it here or like a little one up there, probably here. And then this one, you could have it stand on top of that leaf, like right here. How would I not make it look like awkward? Just It'll just, no, way? it's fine. Just like think of it like the leaf would be behind her. Like, like the red. Yeah, it'll be fine. You'll just see a little bit of the leaf showing through, but that's just like in real life, you know? I mean, it's okay to have things go on top, on top of um, each other. What color? webs do I need? Um, uh, what about yellow? Yellow would be good. Or the coral. You could do either one. That sounds fun, Anita. <laughs> yes, they said, Emma, the purple in your art matches your t-shirt. Oh, yes. Mm-hmm. Purple is your favorite color. It is. Her walls are purple in her room. But we're getting ready to change your room up, I think. Have you decided on a new color? Oh, I don't have it. I don't know. <laughs> okay, what am I doing? This one's like a hot pink. So let's test out that second way that I showed you to do the bird. Have mine facing this way. So I'm gonna do like an oval first. So I just have a little oval on there. And then just kind of swoop that down. Like that. Kind of looks like a cornucopia. What is that? That like it's the shape that all the like fall harvest pumpkins and gourds and stuff come out of. You, you see it in like Thanksgiving decorations. So I'm going in with the hot pink. I'm grabbing a little bit of my light with it. Very rarely do I just use the color straight out of the bottle. I usually am adding something to it. And I think we're gonna add a little purple in here as well. Oh, Tiffany thinks I should paint a mural on your wall. Yeah, Tiffany, in all my free time, that's a great idea. <laughs> right now, it's decorated purple, white, and black, and it's all Paris themed because we love Paris in this family. What happened? I don't like the shape, so I'm just going to wait for it to dry and then redo it. So wait, are you doing a standing one? Yes. Did you do my trick here? No, it wasn't my trick. <laughs> okay, you don't have to repaint it. So um, I'm just going to show them oh. it's fine <laughs> so she doesn't like her shape here now she could do one of two things she could let it dry and then paint over it but i don't think i think this is a good base shape i'm just going to help her with the shape a little bit more so we can do the same thing what color were you using a mix okay 
So let's, yours is going this way. So we do like an oval first. And I'm just gonna pull this up. So that tail just needs to go higher. Maybe swoop this down. And we'll just make it a little bit bigger. <laughs> That's it. Okay. Look, it's still smaller than mine. Oh, okay. So then we just pulled that tail up a little bit and made that front section a little bit taller and bigger. Did you see how I did this one? Wait, that's my brush. <laughs> Our dogs have been behind us. <laughs> I didn't know they were. We have uh, Piper is a little Jack Russell and Paisley is um, a hound beagle mix. They're both adopted. They're our little babies. All right, so I'm gonna grab a little bit of purple and throw this in here. Just mix a little bit more if I run out. Oh, I forgot to add the tail on. So I'll do a little heart here. All right, so that's what we're, where we're at right now. So I think I've given myself enough time that I can come in and paint the wing up here on my top one. Sorry, I'm holding that too high. So the wing is the same shape as the leaf. Exactly the same. So, and we're just going to have it kind of peek out of the top a little bit. So I'm just doing one curve and then another and pulling it back down. So it's a little dark right now. I'm going to let that dry and I'll probably lighten it up and add a little bit more pink to it later. And then I'm still going to let this dry down here. And this one, I didn't do a normal wing. I did um, a heart instead. So you can decide whether you want to do a heart or whether you want to do a normal wing. Just add in a little bit more pink in here. Alright, so that's what we're looking at right now. And now I'm going to take a, um, I'm going to take the hot pink that I have. And I just, this is, you know, a make-believe painting. But I'm just adding like, they're like little berries or dots. I don't really know what they are. I just wanted a bunch of little pink dots all over for some contrast. So I am loading up my number two and I'm just gonna start just doing all these little dots. Maybe little clusters of them. So I'm gonna flip this over back to my direction and start adding those on and then I'll show it to you guys. And you could do different colors too. But when you're doing this, I want you to be really random. I don't want you to overthink it. I used to tease people at my paint nights because I would show, so I'd show this step and then I'd walk around the room and check on people and I'd see women, always the women, not the kids, by the way, just, do you remember this? Yes. We'd walk around and just slowly, meticulously thinking about where each one of those dots were gonna be. And you can do that, but for it to look more natural, the faster you are, the more random it's gonna be, it's gonna look better. It's not gonna look so planned. So I'm gonna do the hot pink that I'm doing right now, and then I'm gonna do some white dots 
too. And those are just kind of all over. Again, just for fun, because I wanted them. And you can see, like, I'm obviously painting faster than, than Emma. So whenever the kids are painting with me or you're doing these videos with me, um, obviously this one's live, you can't slow it down at the moment, but they can always go back to it. So the ones that you're gonna have in your library, um, the, these are all, uh, the Kids Camp is all in a membership portal too. So you'll have a, your own website that you go to that stores all of the videos for you. Um, but they're able to stop, pause, rewind, fast forward. They can take it at their own speed and you just hit the pause button. While I teach a step, hit pause, get that step done, hit play again. Um, so you're not feeling rushed or that you have to paint the same speed that I paint. Okay, so I did my hot pink. Now I'm gonna switch to white. Yes, Pam, that's a great idea. You can also use a Q-tip to do the dots. And that's super easy for kids. You can use the back of your paintbrush. You can. So um, Emma was just saying you can use the back of your paintbrush. Now I'm just going to use this one just to show you guys. But this is a, a tip that I teach a lot. You'll see paint on the end of all of mine. You can dip the back end and just do little polka dots and they end up just perfect. You don't have to worry about pushing the brush down too hard or anything like that. Can you see those? It's kind of hard to see. So that's it's what our little polka dots look like. Yeah. I like that color of green. So I'm going to do a couple small ones with the back of my brush. How do I look at tail? It's just a heart. Or you could do it like you're doing, like, a late, like you're making a bow. You could do... <laughs> That's fine. Oops, that's the back of it. Sorry. <laughs> I'm like, I just got this shirt from Sarah. It doesn't <laughs> I probably shouldn't be wearing it while I'm painting. Okay, so I did some more little dots down at the bottom and then if you look at the original I have some like bigger ones and they're even like I think I did like a little bit of uh, pink mixed in with my white hey Gloria okay so now some bigger ones I just left that pink in there and I'm just going into my white and again I'm just gonna start getting really random here And these are all different sizes. Okay. So those are with the bigger ones. Okay, but I'm going to show you something. Can you guys look at the top? And you'll see this. I just wiped paint on my face. Um, I really recommend taking pictures of your work, of your art while you're working. Um, and kids, maybe, not necessarily. But if you're painting this, so what I noticed is this all looks like a straight line of dots. And I don't like that. So I wouldn't have noticed that until I turned it around and showed you and then I saw it. So I always take pictures of my art while I'm working because it helps you see things that you don't necessarily see with the naked eye. So I'm gonna change that up a little. See how it looks like it's just a line of dots? Oh yes. So we're just gonna break that up, add a little bit more on there. Oh, 
All right. See how that looks a little bit better? A little filling in those dots so it didn't look like just a line of white dots there. And then I added little turquoise hearts in the sky. Oops. Thank you, Michelle. Thanks, Patty. Hope you're enjoying it. Don't forget, if you guys haven't um, entered the contest yet, all you have to do, someone is going to win this original. I'm giving it away. But in order to be entered into the contest, you've got to sprinkle the video with your friends and then comment sprinkled so that you're entered in that contest. Okay, so I'm going to do turquoise. I'm going to add a little bit of white to this. Maybe lighten it up just a little. And I have four hearts on there. So I have two by the top branches and then I have two underneath down here. So we'll see how this works out on the one I'm doing tonight if it ends up the same. And these can all be different. These hearts don't have to look all identical. Why are you doing hearts? Just randomly in the sky. So those are our first two. All right, thank you girls. And let's add one down here. And this is also great. Let's say you like made some polka dots down there that you really hated. You can cover them up with a heart and cover your your little oopsie up. So I've got my hearts added on there. And then we are going to have some little hearts that are coming out of our bottom bird, kind of like she's singing is kind of how I meant those to be. But we've got to do some accents on our birds first. I'm just going to, I already have this like light blue in here. So I'm just going to add a little bit of that to my top blue bird. I can do the heart on her and add her wing or her heart wing on. And again, I'll probably need a second coat on this. We'll see. I kind of I kind of like it how it looks. See your little wing. It's kind of the little bit of the pink is going through, so it kind of looks lavender in the middle. I may change it or I may leave it. What else do I need to do? Let's go ahead and for their beaks, again, you can do whatever color you want to. I'm gonna grab coral. And they're just little triangles on their faces. And if they, your kids need a smaller paintbrush for this, that's fine. You can get little detail brushes. Those are in my Amazon, uh, Amazon, Amazon shop. I love my detail brushes. So if you paint small and you want little dainty details, I highly recommend having those. So I just added the little beaks on. I don't even know if you can see that from that far away maybe add a little bit of yellow in there. Yes, Ginger, you can go back and watch this from the beginning um, once we are done live. 
and it will go on my YouTube channel and the page. And if you comment the word info, you will get all those links sent to you. I'm going to try to hold this up a little bit closer because I really like the way I did coral first and then I added that yellow. Isn't that cute? I like the extra little color in there. So I did coral and yellow for the beak. And I'm going to grab a Sharpie really quick. Hopefully there's one in here. going to go find me a sharpie because we um on their eyes it's just a little curve little eyelashes um and i do this in all the kids paintings i let them use a sharpie for any of the detailing like this you just want to make sure the paint is dry before you add that on but like the ones that i teach in the kids art camp we use a sharpie a lot because it's super easy for kids um in the mermaid one we use a gold sharpie or a bronze sharpie um but that's what we're going to use for the eyes so they're not having to try to paint those itty bitty skinny lines. Okay, what else? I need to add some legs. What color did I do her legs on the bottom there? Blue slash purple first and then you put green on top of her. Alright, we'll mix a little purple again. Gonna add her legs on. And they're literally just two little straight lines. Nothing too fancy about them. What color do I do for my bluebird on the wing? Um, you could do like hot pink. That'd be good contrast with everything else going on. Make sure that's dry, it looks wet. If you do that well, that's, yeah. You don't ever wanna mix green and hot pink together unless you're trying to get brown. <laughs> Cause those, again, opposites on the color wheel. So just remember that if you don't have a color wheel, you guys can print an image of a color wheel off um, online. And it's just really helpful for you to remember kind of what you can mix and what you can't when you're playing with paints and for the kids to learn. So if they're opposite on the color wheel, you don't want to mix them together to create a new color unless you want a brown, a gray, and neutral. So that's what happens when you mix opposites. So when you have a color wheel, you can look and see that like blue and green and yellow are all next to each other. They're on the cool side of the color wheel. You can mix any of those colors together and you're still going to get pretty, pretty new colors. So keep that in mind too. Okay, so I'm going to go, I always like to do little outlines of white as kind of my finishing touches. So I'm grabbing white paint in my number two, and I'm doing really quick, light, wispy lines with these. And I'll turn this around and show you in just a second. But it kind of makes it stand out. All those shapes stand out a little bit more. And I'm not pushing down very hard. I'm just lightly kind of dragging. We can add them around our leaves. I like to just kind of dance all over the canvas and just kind of look at my shapes and do a couple little touches of white highlights around them. And when I lift this up, you'll be able to see what I'm talking about. It doesn't need to be a solid outline. I'm not holding down and tracing around the entire shape. It's just quick little wispies. And if you get too much white, this is something that's very easy to just go back, just add a little bit more green. If you feel like you did it and you're like, ugh, that was way, I didn't mean to put that much white on there, just grab whatever color was underneath it, your main color, and just blend it back in. Remember, there are no mistakes. There's only happy little accidents. So can you 
can see those little highlights on there, how it accents the shape of the bird a little bit. Yes, this is great for all ages. You do not have to be a kid to paint this painting. Um, you don't have to be a kid to do the kids art camp either because we have a lot of my uh, members in my um, tribe group, they love doing these and they're just fun paintings to do. So it doesn't matter what age you are at all, anyone can do these. So now is the part of the painting where I'm, you know, I'm still gonna add the eyelashes on, but I'm just kind of looking at my painting and just deciding what I like, what I wanna change. Maybe I want a little more color here, but the painting's pretty much done. I think I'll add, Emma said I did a green highlight on the legs over here. So we'll just do a little pop of green there. That helps it stand out a little bit more. Did you guys have fun with this one? Is someone excited about winning this piece of art? I hope. So I did a couple little hot pink brush strokes in these hearts in the sky. So I'm gonna add a little bit of those in. Maybe brighten up this wing. Remember earlier I told you I'll probably come back and make this wing in my little blue bird. Oh, Aunt Heather's watching. A little bit brighter. Hi, Aunt Heather. Hi, Aunt Heather. You need to have Logan paint this. She's a good little artist. My niece Logan did the, Logan, you already know how to do these birds. She did the um, spring truck with um, my mother-in-law, her grandma, and hers turned out so good. And that was an adult painting. So, you know, a lot of, um, if you guys look at some of my painting tutorials, um, even if they don't say they're for kids, kids can do them. All right. Let me check for dryness. I'm gonna let it dry just a little bit more and then I'm gonna add the eyelash, the eyes and the eyelash on there. So that is the final painting. I will sign it, I'll sign it and date it. Um, so it's got my signature on it for you. So someone's gonna win that. And the Kids Art Camp is open. Um, just a quick overview on the Kids Art Camp again. It's um, six paintings that are behind Emma and I, and I can show you again if you missed it in the beginning. But the Kids Art Camp is only $150 for six full-length video lessons, all from an aerial view where they're just seeing the canvas and it's step-by-step, -step, lifetime access to those videos. Um, you have access to them 24-7 through our membership portal. So all you have to do is log in, all your videos are in one spot. Um, it includes six traceable templates that you can trace the designs onto the canvas before they get started. And it includes the color and supply list. Um, and we also have our kids art camp club, like our art camp clubhouse. I keep forgetting, I'm like confusing the name of our Facebook group. But it's a little clubhouse where um, those of you that join camp, get to join the Clubhouse Facebook group. And this is where moms, grandmas, the kids can all get on in a safe environment, share their paintings, show off their work, see other kids' paintings. And it's just a really, really fun, positive environment, um, you know, to lift you up and get everyone creating again and having fun with paint and focusing on the positive that we can in the world right now. There's enough going on out there that we can't control, but we can control what we do in our home and we can control what we fill our minds with and whether we choose to fill it with positive things or negative things. So I don't know about you, but I'm about sick of the news. I'll hear just enough so I know what's going on and then I'm done. And then I focus on things that make me happy because that, none of that's gonna do us any good. <laughs> right? You got to focus on what makes you happy and bring joy and give joy. So be the light. Think of all the fun that this is going to bring to your life, to the kids' lives, and in turn, how they're going to share that. Maybe they have a friend that they end up bringing and they start painting. You have no idea how this could change a child's life. Um, and a lot of kids who deal with anxiety and depression, 
even that young, kids who deal with anxiety or low self-esteem, they find art to be healing and freeing and positive, and it allows them to turn their brain off and solely focus on this. And Dee Dee is on here, and it made me think of her daughter. And she told me, they took um, a couple single tutorials with me, and her daughter was dealing with those kind of issues. And it completely changed her. She said, I saw my daughter light up. I saw, I watched her change through painting and how powerful it was to her. So, um, you know, I know that's like taking it serious. I want it, it's happy and fun, but I want you to realize how important art is and how healing it is for people too, at all ages. Um, and how good it is for us at all ages to turn our brains off and get lost in the painting. So um, let me know if you guys have any questions. I'm gonna, I'll be here to answer a few. I'm gonna draw the eyes on and then we'll so be wrapping it up. Oh, thank you, Penny, I forgot. I forgot to add the sing song hearts. See, this is why I have sing you guys. Hearts. They're like, you, look, they're little hearts like she's singing. See, this is why it's good for me to paint live with you guys, because then I don't forget stuff. Becky in my group is so funny. She goes, I always, like, she, like I'll be painting with you, and I think you can hear me, and I'm yelling at the camera, like, you missed that. You missed that. <laughs> she's like, go back, add that there. And then she's like, oh, yeah, I have to type it. So I'm just doing some dainty little hearts here. I'm using my skinny liner brush for this. And we're gonna kinda stagger them. One more. Yes, Pam, I agree. She said it's so important with so many kids stuck at home. And that was one reason I worked really, this summer has been crazy, I mean, for everyone. Um, but, you know, I really, really wanted to get this kids art camp out and put together because I don't know what it's like where you guys are, but I'm going to be my kid's art teacher because they're only going to school two days a week and then they're home. So they go to school Monday, Tuesday, and then they're home Wednesday through Friday. So they're, you know, kids are gonna need extra. You know, kids are gonna need extra from us. And if you're not sure what to do with the kids, this is a great thing to do to at least fulfill that art need, you know, to at least fulfill the creativity part of what they may be missing from school. I also realized I forgot the white highlights on the beak, so I need to go back. We're not in school yet. We start August 24th. But it's like so, it's so weird. Two days a week? Which is also a little scary for me as a mom because, you know, I work from home. <laughs> that's, a, that's a lot of time for us all together, but it'll be good. We actually, when all of this happened, we have really enjoyed how life slowed down and the amount of time we were getting to spend together as a family and, you know, it was, it was kind of like a, a staycation. And I think it was, I'm not saying don't, don't take this the wrong way. I know what's happening is terrible, but I'm saying you can find the good in it. You can find the positive in it. And I think God has used it because he can turn anything into good. He can turn all bad into good if we choose to see it. And he allowed us time to be together with our families again and to slow life down a little bit. Um, so there's pros and cons to what's going on, but again, we're just we're just making the best of it. Someone said, did you paint light on the top wing? Yes, here, I'll, I'll show you. So there's the little singing hearts out of the bottom bird's mouth. We added the white highlights to the beak. <laughs> Try to get that a little bit closer. Bottom bird, top. And then I'm gonna add the final finishing touch. 
is the light. Now, when I'm teaching your kids in the lessons in the art camp, they won't be this long. They're gonna be shorter and sweeter and hold the kids' attention longer. When we do lives, there's a lot more conversation. So I'm just gonna do just like a little semi-circle. So just the bottom half of a circle. And then I'm just pulling some little lines down for some eyelashes for our little, our little lovebirds. What do I not have yet, other than the beak and the eyes? And she's done. Um, other than the beak and the eyes, the hearts in the sky. What color? I did blue. I would do yellow on yours. Yeah, that would be cute. Oh, they want to see yours again. You want to hold it up from, um, for them? Yeah. For them. <laughs> Thank you, Aaron. I'm not sure if you're still on here. Thank you for doing what you're doing in the health healthcare field as well. Yes, this camp would be perfect for those of you homeschooling as well. If you guys know any moms homeschooling, make sure you um, share this with them. All right, ladies, thank you guys so much. I'm just scroll down to the bottom, make sure I didn't miss anything at the very end, but I think we're good. So I hope you guys had a lot of fun. Thank you for joining me. And Kids Art Camp is open, so I can't wait to have you guys join the Kids Art Club. We're gonna have so much fun in there. And I can't wait to see this round of paintings that the kids are getting ready to do. So I hope they had fun. Post, make sure you join the free Facebook group. And there will be a post in there probably tomorrow, if not tomorrow, Tuesday. And there will be a place for everyone to post their finished Lovebirds painting. Bye, tell them bye.